Good afternoon NorCal Carters. Jason's back with another quick video and this one is on installing and removing a circlip. Now this is a circlip I happen to have for a Freeline master cylinder but I'm not really going into the rebuild on that master cylinder at this moment. This is more for the circlip and you're going to find circlips throughout your go-kart. Uh, a lot of times you have them on your steering column and it holds the uniball bearing at the base of your steering shaft. And many people may not know, but circlips can be directional. So a circlip many times is just stamped out of steel. And the steel can vary. Uh, some companies have a very nice steel that has a spring tension to it and they last longer. Other companies use real cheap steel and the circ clips are only really good for one use. But I'm not going to be able to show you in this video because I just don't have a way to do it. But a lot of circ clips, if you feel them, one side is a little bit rounded and one side is a little sharp. And when you install a circ clip, such as this internal circ clip here, you want to make sure that the sharp side is facing your load. So for example, on this master cylinder, there's a piston with a spring behind it which is pushing outward or towards the camera. So what we want to do is we want to use a circlip tool and again this is an internal circlip so you have the internal style and you have external. On an internal circlip you're going to squeeze it to compress and you're going to put the circlip in the groove. And when you let it go, so that is in the groove. So, what you want to notice, you want to do a quick test, push it down, push it down, push it down. You want to double check your work. So in this example, I'm not quite in the groove. See that, how it's floating around? So that's not quite right. So we're going to take it out. The reverse step, use the circlip tool, squeeze, remove. Now when you're doing master cylinders or brakes, keep in mind many times they are spring loaded. So do not aim at your face. Do not aim at a loved one. And if you are going to aim it, Make sure you aim it somewhere where you can find the parts later. So bear with me for a second. I did this a lot faster when I'm not trying to keep it in focus on the camera, but it is what it is. So you see how that kind of just shot out? That one doesn't have a lot of pressure, but sometimes they do. So again, double check your work. And what we're going to do is, we're going to redo this. Normally what I do, and I didn't bring it, is there's a lever that goes inside this piston. I normally just use the lever to help compress everything and I hold it with my thumb. And that keeps everything compressed. And then I have the lever going through the circlip. But again, this is not a rebuild video. This is more of a how to install and remove a circlip video. And it always helps to have the right size pliers. So these, I just grabbed them. They were 90 degree. It makes it a little bit easier to hold and show it on video. But you want to make sure that the tits on the circlip tool are just a little bit smaller than the actual circlip holes. If they're too small and not the right size, as you apply pressure, what happens is they'll want to slip off or, and then shoot the circlip. So here we go again. Maybe I'll do it slightly different just so we can get the video going here. So on this particular master cylinder there's actually two grooves. There's one groove for the circlip itself to keep everything in and then there's a further groove that a rubber dust cover slips into and um, 
the first time I stuck it in that rubber groove, the boot groove. But now we're in the correct groove. So again, you always want to double check your work. So we're good there. And that's pretty much about it. So remember, the circlips can be directional. You want the sharp edge of the circlip facing your load. So in this example, the sharp edge on this circlip is actually facing outwards because the piston behind it is pushing the circlip. And it's just a small detail. And the reason you do that is because the other side is rounded and you want as much surface area pressing against your load as possible. Uh, it just minimizes chances of failure. And again, if you're using uh, cheap circlips, measure them ahead of time, order them ahead of time in case you shoot them across the garage, uh, then you're not delayed another couple days before you get circlips. But if you notice if you compress or expand the circlip and they, they kind of lose their shape and they hold where you compressed or expanded them, get rid of it.